After 15 spring practice sessions, head coach Sean Elliott and the Georgia State football team set to take the turf down at Georgia State Stadium on Saturday for the annual Blue-White Spring Football Game. Coach Elliott will join us in studio as we preview Georgia State's spring football game. We're also going to talk women's tennis with head coach Jason Marshall and Ivy Drake from Georgia State Women's Softball joins us. One of the all-time great softball sluggers in Georgia State softball history. This week in the Georgia State Sports Update. Attention to detail, attention to detail every day. Let's get set, let's get lined up right here, all right? Oh, get Good. Good, snap your eyes around, same foot, same foot, same foot. Hi again, Panther fans, and welcome into this week's Georgia State Sports Update. We're talking Georgia State football here in the opening segment. We've got head football coach Sean Elliott with us in studio. And, Coach, great to have you in here again. And uh, we got a big game, or I should say a big event coming up. So the Blue-White Annual Spring Game is part of it on Saturday down at Georgia State Stadium. But, uh, what, four weeks now uh, in the books with regards to spring practice. I think it works out to in and around, what, 15 practice sessions. Yes. And you finally get a chance to put them on the field and run somewhat of a simulated spring game. Yeah, you know, we've, we've actually done that a couple times already, but then to go and play it in the stadium is going to be great uh, in front of a good crowd. And, you know, it's a great day to host a lot of good recruits to come in there and see our facilities and, and let our guys go out there and put on the real uniform and, and, uh, and battle it out. You know, we talked about this uh, in one of your last appearances on the show, but seven and five a year ago, uh, win in the Auto Nation Cure Bowl. It seems like every time I've been out at spring practice, there's been a lot of high school coaches, high school recruits out there, and that has not always been the case over the eight yeah. years. But you can tell just in that little uh, area how much last season and a win in a bowl game can be can mean to the program. Yeah, you know, just yesterday we had 35 high school coaches and there were 65 recruits that come out and watch us and. And, uh, and that's, that's something that I, I really, uh, it, it's, a, it's an openness at our practices to have those guys come in there. We want them to see us. Uh, we want them to, uh, to come in there and get a good feel for how we coach and how our players respond to our coaching. And uh, it, it's a great way to uh, form good bonds with high school coaches, especially here in the Atlanta area, because it's such an easy convenience to, uh, to come out and watch us practice, especially during this time of the year in their spring breaks. All right, so as you get ready for the spring game on Saturday, thinking back to these 15 spring practices and going back a year ago, easier might not be the right word, but as far as expectations from the players, the second time around, they have a full array of expectations of what you and the coaching staff expect and we're looking for to accomplish during this spring practice session. Yeah, I think, session. Uh, you know, going into last spring, it was more about uh, coaching effort. You yep. know, that's what we had to really... Uh, really stress on and that's something you shouldn't have to coach uh, it should be instilled in them and uh, going in the spring it was and so we we're able to, to be a lot crisper on assignments and really teach through some fundamental things and uh, you, it's very evident I mean if you throw on a film from last spring to this spring I mean you, you go oh my gosh and and we've actually done it from last fall camp to this spring right. and in the difference is night and day. 52 Letterman and uh, Letterman returning this year and uh, what well, you got 14 players that started on offense, seven that got starts on defense. So you bring back some experience, even though we did lose some, uh, you know, some, some key players at key positions. Yeah, you know, we... Uh, but, you know, but that's it, always going to be the case. Certainly it is. Yeah. I mean, everybody talks about, oh, you lost the productivity of, okay. uh, of your running back and all this, uh, your quarterback and all this stuff. I mean, listen, that happens every year. I mean, people right. graduate and you move on. You better have guys in place uh, to take the next step. And uh, we feel like we've uh, developed a really good battle for our quarterback position. I mean, it's really fun to watch them go out and compete and, and see them make strides each and every day in their practices. And, and to tell you the truth, I've gotten uh, excited about watching that position more and more. They've, uh, they've done a lot of, uh, of good things with their commanding the offense, um, some of their, their foot movement, and, and putting the, all, the ball in the perimeter with their skills has, has really come out. So I love that battle, our running back uh, position. 
Uh, Trey Barnett has stepped in there and done a, a great job. Uh, Kirk did a good job a year ago. He's been very solid for us this spring. And, uh, you know, over there in the in the back end, our secondary position, our corner spots uh, have been good battles. So, you know, all in all, it's been uh, exactly what we wanted to see thus far. All right, you started off uh, with the quarterback position. Dan Ellington out of uh, Mississippi uh, comes in out of yeah. Itawamba. Uh, he's, from what I've seen so far, he can really deliver the ball through the air. He can also uh, use his feet pretty well. So you got Aaron Winchester back, who yeah. is uh, really good at uh, tucking and running. And then you yeah. got Jack Walker, a freshman that came in last year, mm -hmm. and uh, Jaquez, uh, Jaquez Parks. Yeah, you know, all those guys have different talents. You, you mentioned Winchester. He can pull it down and run it. Well, we didn't allow him to scramble this spring. Right. I mean, uh, our quarterbacks were a lot of live situations. I mean, we were letting them deliver blows, but uh, in a lot of our drills, I told him, I said, you better, you've got to sit in the pocket and deliver. You've got to, that antsiness with your feet, we've got to develop a pocket presence. And so we haven't allowed them to, to tuck it and run uh, like they did a year ago in, in last spring. So uh, all in all, they've, they've really done a good job. I mean, Parks got a little banged up. He got a little AC joint sprain, but uh, because of the physical, you know, we turned them loose. We let them go and and, uh, and compete a little bit. So they've all done a really nice job. And, you know, it, it won't be settled until probably next fall camp uh, over the summer. You know, a lot of things have to go into that quarterback position. Fifteen days isn't going to solidify hardly, hardly anything for us. Yeah, like you said, it's only 15 days. If my yeah. math is correct, did you go to pads in the third spring practice? Yeah, of course. First two, no? I mean, first I mean, two. I mean, first two, you got to go in helmets and then you right, get full right. pads. and. You can pretty much stay in full pads every single day. I think we have uh, we were in shells one other day, but uh, all in all, we're going to be in full pads other than our last helmet day this coming Friday. Uh, so we'll go out there and we'll focus on assignments and do some special teams work and get a lot out of that practice and then get ready for Saturday. Well, regardless of uh, who the quarterback is, and as you said, you'll know when you get uh, fall, once again loaded you know, depth-wise, I think, at the receiver spot, starting with number 18, Penny Hart, but Tamir Jones, Devin Gentry uh, saw quite a bit of time last year. Lo loved the tight ends, Ari Wirtz. I think Roger Carter, when, you know, in some of the interviews you and I did last season, you were talking about all the freshmen that were getting valuable mm -hmm. playing time. He was one of them. Yeah, Roger, Roger Carter was. has done a great job. Yeah. I mean, to tell you the truth, his blocking has really progressed to the point where it's – it's fun. I pinpointed today. We're in the O line meeting right there, and I said, "You want you want to see a backside slip or backside cutoff? You watch Roger Carter right here. I mean, perfect inside step, and uh, just really threw his hat across and got everything accomplished that you want to get accomplished. Uh, he's a sure-handed uh, pass catching tight end uh, with it with some movement skills that can can move people off the ball." I know in one of the interviews we did, you were pretty pleased with the offensive line too, with uh, with what you've got coming back and what you will add to that from the signing class. Yeah, you know they, they've done a good job. I mean, uh, it's been a lot more crisp, uh, and, and one of the evidence of that is as you look at your your backs runs, and I get a I get a sheet every day, and you know, it's kind of tallying up the runs, lost yardage runs, things of that nature. And uh, for four straight days, there were there was no negative yardage runs, and and that 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 marks an improvement. We had way too many negative yard uh, runs a year ago uh, during the season, but the assignments are coming around. They're actually their bodies have changed. I mean. Uh, you take a guy like Lucas Johnson that's actually had a really good spring, but mm -hmm. uh, his lower body has changed. I mean, uh, and, and all of them, uh, uh, you know, Malik Sumter, is, uh, they just all look different. Uh, and they're still young pups. Jalen Jackson, I mean, those guys like that. Connor, I mean, God, just uh, to see them transform their bodies, and, and they're all just freshmen. Where do you see the transformation most historically when you've, uh, you know, over the course of your coaching career? Do you see it from a freshman to a sophomore, uh, sophomore to a junior? You know, everyone's a little bit different. Uh, typically in the old line, it, it, it takes another year to really grasp it. But uh, they've done a good job. Uh, you know, a skill position player, if you're running back or wide receiver, you know, the God given ability pretty much takes over. You still got to have the assignment oriented. But the, sometimes as a wide receiver, you can go out there and make plays and probably none, not running the, the correct assignment, quote unquote, but uh, they can kind of get away with it. So, uh, you know, that development of the offensive line is going to take another year, of course. And talking to Coach Sean Elliott here, Georgia State annual blue-white spring game coming up on Saturday, April the 7th, down at Georgia State Stadium. It's free. You're going to have a clinic. I'm going to ask you about a few more players, yeah. but uh, it's going to start out with a clinic for the uh, for the younger kids. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the great things that we do, we're, we're gonna, 
we want to take advantage. We want people to take advantage of us, I should say. Uh, two o'clock, we're going to have that kids clinic, and, and we want them to come out here. We want, we want to introduce them to Georgia State football. We want to introduce them to the game of football, experience a fun day out there with our players and our coaches uh, running around and, and just enjoying the day. And, then, and it doesn't matter how small or, you know, I, I want them to come out there and just have a great time. I think there's going to be some other things that are set up for the, uh, for the kids as well. But, uh, you know, actually interact with us and then enjoy the spring game as they watch it. For the kids, just shorts and helmets, or are you going right into pads and uh, hitting right away? For the kids? I'm just kidding. Well, the, <laughs> see, here's the great thing about kids. They play the game the exact same way at an early age. Yeah. They play it physical. Yeah. It doesn't matter if they have pads on or not. I mean, I can take my son. He's nine right now. He's going to play it. It didn't matter if he had a helmet or shoulder pads on. He plays it the same way he does at nine years old. Yeah. doesn't matter. All right, last question. Is there, again, in all seriousness, is there something when you go back and look at that film from Saturday when it's all said and done, Saturday night, if you're, if you're at home or in the office watching that, that yeah. you're kind of going to be looking for a few things in particular. Well, I can tell you I'm not going to watch it Saturday night <laughs> at home. <laughs> I'm not doing that. It's a spring game. I mean, it's going to be, I mean, let, let, let's, let's understand what it is. Yeah. We're going to try to go out there. Uh, it, it's going to be very, very vanilla. We want to block and tackle. We want to do things. We want to execute uh, game-like situations very, very crisply uh, and, and not go through the motions. They will play hard. I mean, we're, we're going to tackle them. We're going to block and it's going to be a, a live uh, uh, game like situation in that instance but we're not going to go out there and do a lot of uh, X's and O's things that we're going to take in the next fall where it shouldn't be very very basic so we'll come back we'll reflect on it after uh, sometime next week and uh, have our, our individual position meetings and give them an assessment of of where we are as coaches and, and where they are as players all right coach great having you in here we'll yeah. see you Saturday down at the stadium that's right We'll try to, try to keep the rain away. What do you think? Yeah, well, I hope so. It doesn't matter. We're going regardless. That's right. All right, I want to thank Georgia State's head football coach, Sean Elliott, joining us here in the opening segment of uh, this week's Georgia State Sports Update. Stay with us. Coming up, we're going to talk women's tennis with head coach Jason Marshall. Back here on the Georgia State Sports Update, we're talking women's tennis now. Jason Marshall is with us here in studio, and uh, Coach, great to have you here in studio. Back in the show, you've been uh, you've been with us before. Tell us a little bit yeah. about how women's tennis has been playing recently. Oh, I appreciate. It. Thanks, Dave, for having me. Uh -huh. um, yeah, we've had a pretty good year so far. Um, I think as to this week, we're ranked 68 in the country right now, and out of those rank, out of those national rankings, we are we are still the number one uh, team out of the whole Sun Belt, at least national rank wise. But, so we're having a pretty good season so far, and we've got about two to three weeks before we uh, hit our conference tournament. Conference tournament this year, uh, in the past, I should say, has been down in New Orleans, uh, just like the men's basketball tournament. This year, down in Peachtree City, Georgia. Yeah, it's a little bit, little bit easier for us this year. Uh, the Sun Belt uh, tournament was up for bids, and Peachtree City really wanted to host it. And so, yeah, we get to sleep in our own beds and, and drive our own van, and it's a lot easier for us because we don't have to fly there and all the long drive and hotel and things like that. So it'll be a lot easier for us this year and we can get some home fans out there. I was going to say a lot of Georgia State tennis fans can make their way down to Peachtree City to the tennis center down there and follow Georgia State, cheer them on this year in the Sun Belt Tournament. Well, most recently you were over in lovely Conway, South Carolina, and it was what they call a pod. So Georgia State's there, two other Sun Belt teams are there as well. And uh, you ended up, uh, you played Troy in, uh, in one of those matches. Yeah, um, well the pods, um, they have two pods a year. Uh, the Sun Belt in tennis is divided up into east <coughs> and west. And so two, two schools will host. So Coastal Carolina hosted all the eastern teams, Georgia State, Georgia Southern, Troy, Appalachian State, Coastal Carolina. They all come there and they play matches over the two days. And so we played Appalachian State. We had a good win over them, 4-3. And then we played Coastal Carolina and lost a tough one, 4-3 to them. Uh, not Coastal, uh, Troy. Um, Troy, and had a close one with them. We were battling a few injuries the last couple of weeks, but, you know, it's really, it, it's okay. They're a tough team, and, you know, we'll rebound from that. They talk about injuries all the time in all the various sports that we talk about on this show. What's the most common injury or the one that you, you know, work best to avoid uh, at, at the collegiate tennis level? Well, uh, one of the most common things is just rolled ankles. I mean, I think that's really with a lot of quick change of direction. Um, you know, we're not we're not like basketball. It's getting taped our ankles before every single game. I mean, one little wrong move or wrong cut, it's real easy to kind of sprain an ankle easily. So we've had a couple girls 
um, have had repeat sprains over the last couple of years. I mean, but really, I mean, things like shoulders, knees, hips, backs, I mean, you name it. I mean, it's, it's just, it's tough when you're playing on a, on a hard court surface rather than like grass or turf. The body does take a little more wear and tear, so you have to really be careful about, you know, how much mileage you're putting out there. Well, you mentioned uh, the, the match against Troy in the pod over at Conway. That was close, lost in the number five singles court, which ultimately gave Troy the win. So it came down, came down to a you know a late match. Yeah, and Laura um, Laura Volk was our uh, our junior was playing in that position, and actually the week before we played Furman, and it was three all, and she was in the same exact position um, as well. And uh, you know she played, she came back from being a set in five zero th that week, and came back and won the set, and then and then we were playing, uh, seeing ourselves in a third set. So we knew she was capable of you know we wanted her out there, and, and you know she didn't quite get the victory, but you know. The the fact that we, she's out there and and we were down we were already down a player so it was a little bit difficult for us but no it was, it was a good effort by her and, and and she played really well at the conference tournament last year so she gets better throughout the season all right let's talk about your uh, senior number one player and we'll go through uh, as much of the lineup as we can yeah. but uh, your senior number one is Christine Ressa yeah I mean we've been so lucky to have her for four years she's been definitely our best player um, for all four years, she's our most reliable player on and off the court. She's just a great, great, great girl. I mean, she's been a joy to coach. Um, she's a great, I mean, a great academic student. She's actually going to be, um, after she graduates, she's going to be uh, going to grad school here. She got uh, in the MBA program. But she's just been a great leader for our team. Everyone looks up to her. And uh, she's improved so much. She's one of those few players where you can say she came in at number four, number five on our team. And she has worked her way up to number one and winning number one. And she's probably going to be up for being the conference player of the year, at least one of two or three players that will be up for that. And, you know, just to see her grow, um, you know, each year has been great. Well, when you look ahead, not that you're looking too far ahead, but as we go through the roster, you've got a player, Daniela, uh, Daniela Ramirez, who's a junior. So she'll be, does she... You look to move her into that spot, you know, when looking a little bit further down the line? Absolutely. I mean, Danielle is kind of an interesting case. She came in uh, as a freshman. She came in in, in mid-year, in January, and she played uh, very well. And she actually clinched the conference match for us, the conference tournament match for us. And she played very well. We were really lucky to get her. Um, she's from Venezuela. And, um, I mean, she had, you know, obviously with some of the things going on down there, she's been dealing with some personal issues down there. And, uh, but she, to see her, she's at the highest uh, UTR, her highest rating ever um, this, this spring. Uh, I think she's like a 10.25, but that basically means she's playing the best tennis she's ever played in her life. Yeah. And uh, she's moved up, and, and she's winning more matches and playing a higher position at the same time. So, um, She's just she's one of the our most fit players, Christine and her. I mean, they are they work extremely hard. Um, they they bring a lot of energy to the program. I mean, they're kind of the backbone of, backbone of our program and in, in, in how we bring energy to our matches. All right, two other players I want to touch on that uh, have been playing pretty well. Demira Muminovich, I get that pronunciation Muminovich, right? Muminovich, yeah. Muminovich got that one. And you, we were talking about one of the freshmen, Elizabeth uh, Elizabeth Danilova. Yeah, um, well, Danilova, freshman from Sofia, Bulgaria, um, great player. And um, I mean, like any freshman, a little bit in the fall, just the adjustment period. I mean, it always takes freshmen, like especially international freshmen, about four or five months to really make that adjustment. And uh, it's amazing when she came, when we came back from Christmas break, our first tournament, she had just got back from Bulgaria and she got off the plane and the next day she beat Georgia's <laughs> top 20 player in the country, you know, um, all-American player. And you're like, you didn't expect that. Yeah. So she obviously, when she went back home for the break, she, she <clears throat> trained very hard with her coaches there. And we, we felt really, really positive, like, wow, we, you know, she's, we can stick her up pretty high in the lineup right away rather than bring her, you know, you know kind of bring her up slowly. And um, you know, she had a little patch where she, had, she missed a few matches because of some injuries. But then she came back um, right before spring break and she won six matches in a row at the number two position. I mean, she beat Kansas State, SMU, North Texas, Furman, Liberty. I mean, she was just popping them off one by one, beating everybody. And so to see her play the way she has this year as a freshman in such a high position, I mean, it's really, uh, it, it's really amazing. And Demira, um, her, I mean, she is from Tuzla, Bosnia. I don't know if you could find that on a map, but. Um, 
But she's, uh, in one year, it's amazing, she had a really difficult transition coming to America with the language barrier and the academics. And to see her just change um, her body language, her tone, um, you know, between every point, she's always bringing a lot of energy now. And she was one of those players that could always tend to get, you know, had always had a very high level, but also uh, could get down on herself easily. But she, uh, in being here um, a year and a half now, she just made a day and night improvement. And her tennis has gone up, she's gotten fitter, her rating has gotten higher, she's moving up in the lineup, she's playing better doubles, she's more coachable. Um, so I really see her coming back, um, you know, really even this season, I mean, at the conference tournament and also coming back next year, she's gonna be a really, really, really good player for us. All right, well, good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, good stuff, and uh, great to have you with us on the show well, this thanks, week. Thanks, Dave, I appreciate it. All right, you got April 7th and 8th coming up. Georgia State going to host a pod, and uh, you love Georgia Southern and South Alabama here, so good luck in that. I appreciate it, thank you. All right, I want to thank Jason Marshall, women's tennis coach here at Georgia State, joining us for a few minutes here on the Georgia State Sports Update. One of the great sluggers in Georgia State's softball history, Ivy Drake, will join us next. Back here on the Georgia State Sports Update, I want to thank uh, Coach Elliott and uh, Jason Marshall for coming in. We've talked football and we've talked women's tennis. Time now to talk Georgia State women's softball. One of the all-time great sluggers in <laughs> Georgia State softball history is with us here in studio, Ivy Drake. Hey, great to have you in Hi, here. Hi, thank you for having me. Well, congratulations to Ivy. <clears throat> Sunbelt Conference Softball Player of the Week honors. This after getting Georgia State Athletics Student Athlete of the Week honors. You've had a pretty good week. Congratulations. I did. Thank you. <laughs> Let's talk about, uh, I was looking over the last uh, three games that you took two of three from Troy. Talk a little bit about that series because you're in the meat of the Sun Belt mm -hmm. schedule right now. So these, these yeah. games are big. Yeah. So we haven't been doing very well in conference. Um, we've kind of struggled. We definitely should have won. But coming into Troy, we were determined to win. We were going to do whatever we could. Um, you know, we came together as a team and everything clicked and we got the two wins, which is awesome. I think it gives us a lot of um, confidence going into Wednesday's game and then hopefully that game gives us even more confidence going into the next series so we can take it too. Well, these are some, <coughs> excuse me, some incredible numbers that uh, Ivy put up. Uh, okay, so you took two of three from Troy and then one at Georgia Tech. Before mm -hmm. I get to the numbers, winning at Georgia Tech, that's the second time this year that you, yeah. that you guys have beat mm -hmm. Georgia Tech. That in, that in and of itself is, uh, is, a, is a great accomplishment yeah. and a lot of fun because that's that inner city rivalry. Oh, yeah, it's, it's always awesome to beat Georgia Tech. We, that's, in that's, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, aside from conference, like, that's one of the biggest games. Them and Kennesaw, we just always um, play hard and try to get the wins against them. All right, so how about these numbers that Ivy put up uh, in those four games? Four home runs. Well, I take that back. This is just against Troy. Four home runs, seven RBIs in the uh, series win against Troy. You had a solo home run in game one, a walk-off home run in the 12th inning of game two, a home run and a grand slam in game three. I mean, is that enough? Yeah, <laughs> I was actually kind of mad when I got out my third at bat, I'm not going to lie. But no, I saw the ball very well this weekend. I went in early. I hadn't been feeling a lot really comfortable in the box um, the past couple of days, past couple of weekends. So um, before the game Friday, before the game Saturday, I came in a little early and, you know, I hit, tried to just get my confidence level up, trying to get back into the groove of things, and I guess it paid off for I was me. Gonna, I was going to say, whatever you did <laughs> is working, because yeah. those are some incredible numbers. Now, the series yeah. for Troy, you were 6 for 10 overall, 5 runs scored, 3 walks, and you, you may think this is the best statistic out of that series. You didn't strike out a yeah. single time. Yeah. That's yeah. incredible. I try to keep the strikeouts down. That probably the thing that eats me up the most is striking out. So I was very happy when I saw, well, when I finished the weekend with those strikeouts. So you went in, you got a little bit of extra batting practice. Mm -hmm. After that first at bat or two, do you feel like you're in a rhythm and that ball, I mean, the softball is obviously <laughs> bigger than a baseball anyway, yeah. but how big does that softball look when that's coming at you? Yeah, um, well, I, when I went to get extra practice, I hit off um, this big black machine that we have, and I'm, I, I'm not kidding, I whiffed at every single ball. I did not make contact with any ball. I didn't hit solid contact, nothing. And so going into the game, I was kind of nervous, but then I got up there and it literally was just there, and it worked out. It, Y'all had a pretty good series with regards to fielding percentage too. Mm -hmm. You had 19 putouts and obviously oh, yeah. limited, you know, limited errors. Yeah. And uh, you know, as much as we talk about offense, mm -hmm. the defensive part of the game because the field's a little bit smaller yeah. is huge as well. Yeah. Um, 
you know, we've always had a good defense. We've always um, made clean plays. I know the past couple weekends we've struggled here and there. Um, and this weekend, like I said earlier, it just all came together. Everything was working and so happy to get the two wins against Troy. Well, again, a big weekend for statistics. Let me give you the last statistics, by the way. And, and Will Owens, the uh, sports info guy for softball. The run scored in the Grand Slam broke Georgia State's all-time record for career runs oh. scored with 191. Mm -hmm. So another congratulations Thank on you that. So much. That's another uh, another statistic <laughs> yeah. to, to add to all the statistics. Right now, though, hitting 412, 10 home runs, 41 RBIs, and 23 runs scored. Now, as as good of a season as you are, are, have had and are having. Uh, Megan Latumbe and Reagan Morgan also hitting the ball really well. Oh, yeah, they're um, definitely a big part of the lineup. Um, Reagan's been seeing the ball great. Megan, you know, she always sees the ball great. So it's it's really good to have the two people to kind of compete with. I mean, right. they, they push me to, to um, be better. So it's fantastic. But it, it makes opposing pitchers, it puts them in a position where they can't really pitch around yeah, anybody. Yeah, which is, which is great, too. Um, they have to go. We had, you know, a strong leadoff, too, and... Um, when Reagan comes up, she gets on. That's, I mean, they're not going to walk me to get to Megan. Like that doesn't make sense. So um, it's really great to have such hot bats in the lineup. Right now, Ivy leads the Sun Belt in home runs, RBIs, doubles, total bases, and uh, you know she's tied for second in hits. Can we work on that a little bit? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> definitely going to. <laughs> All right. So you know you were you were mentioning that uh, that right now the Panthers are struggling a little bit within Sun Belt Conference, mm -hmm. which it's crazy to I mean uh, it's crazy to say right now 18 and 16 overall, four and seven in the Sun Belt Conference, but you're four and three in your last seven games. Mm -hmm. um, why is that? Because offensively, you guys seem to be tearing the cover off the ball. Um, well, offensively, really, we've um, the past couple weekends, we just haven't got those big hits that we need. Um, when runners are in scoring position, situational hitting, um, stuff like that, we, we haven't really put it all together yet. Um, this weekend we did, but um, everything just this weekend seemed to just click. As in when we were playing the first couple tournaments, nothing was really mo moving s smoothly. So... Um, like I said, everything clicked this weekend and paid off. All right, well, you got Mercer for a midweek game, and then uh, how about number 22, Louisiana Lafayette, yeah. coming in this weekend? That'll be a big challenge. You'll be out at Bob Heck Softball Complex, and when you get past Louisiana Lafayette, hopefully winning that series, Georgia will be in here mm -hmm. uh, the following midweek. They're number 25, so you got some yeah. tests coming up. Oh, yeah, we do, but, you know, it's great competition. It helps us in the long run, so we're excited. All right, well, appreciate you coming Thank in. You Keep so it much. up, and uh, next time you come in, you'll be leading everything in every <laughs> statistic. But uh, good luck, and we'll be following. Thank you so much. All right, I want to thank Ivy Drake coming in and joining us, the slugger with Georgia State women's softball. Again, they've got Louisiana Lafayette coming in. Real quick, Georgia State baseball back in action this weekend as well out at Panthersville. Head coach Greg Frady and the Panthers have Arkansas State coming in on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And keeping up real quick, Panthers and the pros. Currently four former Georgia State baseball players play in minor league baseball. Matt Rose in Birmingham with the Class AA Birmingham Barons of the Chicago White Sox. Nathan Bates, Class AA Mobile Bay Bears, affiliated with the Los Angeles Angels. Joey Roach, Class A with the Charlotte Stone Crabs, the Tampa Bay Rays affiliate. And Bryce Conley, the pitcher with the Class A Beloit Snappers an affiliate of the Oakland A's. I want to thank all of our guests today. We're here every week talking Georgia State athletics for the entire crew. I'm Dave Cohn. We'll see you here next week at the Georgia State Sports Update.